see Miliani. I can see Clinton's window. Hello. Hi, Looks like we've got a quiet night tonight. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Miliani, I'm hoping you've done your homework. <laughs> I haven't done anything, actually. <laughs> uh, that's all good. All good. You're, you're just here to make sure nothing goes wrong. So. Yeah, up. <laughs> Excellent. But you, you can also write down the names of the people who weren't here and make sure they get an email and tell them they were naughty and they should come twice next week. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Quentin, I've, I've got a bit of research that I've been doing, which I'm, I'm happy to share. Yeah. And um, I'd like to hear what you've been up to this week, mate. Um, I've been fasting for the last two weeks, so I haven't done anything. <laughs> Water fasting, juice fasting? Crypto cost fasting. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, That's so something I different. At my account. I haven't been looking at emails to do anything. Yeah, yeah. So, so someone has told you you're spending too much on crypto and you need to take a break? No, I was telling myself I was spending too much on crypto. Yeah. yeah. I've been going pretty solid since I started. So I thought I'd have a break just to give myself a bit of a rest from it and then have a look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. Are you, have you been watching the markets all day, every day, mate? <clears throat> For the last two weeks? No. No, but prior to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I try not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> unless unless you, you're day trading, you know, sort of buying a coin at nine o'clock and selling it at, at, at lunchtime. Um, I like to buy ones that I'm going to hold on to at least for a month, uh, yeah. if 12 months. So that's why I like to do a bit of research. So, uh, there's, there's a lot of my friends who are out there and they're trading and they've got, you know, we're following XRP or we're following XMR and they don't even know what the coin is. They don't know its name. They don't know what it does. But they're just following the little, little charts and that can become very, very stressful. So, yeah, well, that's sort of what I was doing. So mm, I just mm. wanted to break away from it. So now I'm actually starting to um, list all the coins that I'm keen on and doing... A spreadsheet on them all to see how they yep. are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And and that's sort of more more quality data that you're looking at. You know, what's the the fundamentals of technology behind it? Or yeah, yeah. Well, initially I was just because when I started, I was doing a um, I was doing research for a client. Yeah. And I liked what I saw so much, I got involved. And then I made quite a lot of money over November, December, Jan oh, November, December. Yeah. And so then I pu I've pulled all that out. And then I thought I'd try an index, which I told you before. Yeah. And then I just noticed that I was just chasing it too hard. So, um, and the index has actually done pretty good because even though there was a bloodbath, I'm still up like 10% or something. <laughs> I haven't lost any money, so it's still yeah. better than my 1% I was getting in the bank. Absolutely. And it's Absolutely. free money anyhow, because I've taken out all my um, expenses and everything. Mm. Mm. So now I'm thinking of what I will do next. Will I start day, because I've just retired, so I'm thinking, will I start day trading or will I start doing a bit more, more trading than just buying and sitting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, day, day trading can be fun and exciting. It can also be very, very stressful. Um, yeah. I, I find that you're sort of using the, the left brain a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that, can, that can lead to a, to a lot of burnout because that's what we tend to do in our, in our society. We're all sort of concerned about facts and figures and times and appointments and things like that. Yeah. And most, most people to chill out, they need to like, read a Harry Potter book, just read something that's totally fiction rather than reading textbooks and newspapers um, or paint or dance or do yoga or meditate or something like that just to work out the other side of the brain. But even when I'm, I'm reading some not so technical data, just looking at what these guys are actually creating and, and how they're doing that, that sort of wakes up the other side of my, my brain when I'm looking at the, the qualities rather than just the, the quantity of data. So. Yeah, well, I love the research. So mm. I'm more interested in the research than the actual buying and selling, but I'll do that as part of it. Sort of thing. Yeah, very good. 
Will, what have you been up to, mate? Well, g'day, but um, yeah, great. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, no, or, um, yeah, no, things going great. Thanks. Um, or um, more, I'm pretty well um, uh, managing my emotions pretty well. I feel. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned about what's going on. I'm just trying to pick a few. Mm -hmm. I'm just currently looking to reinvest and put some money into Power Ledger. Yep. Yep. And, um, you put a small amount of money in there and see if see if that um, goes for a run in February. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, like Quentin was talking earlier about the about the bloodbath. Um, but if you go back, like with with Bitcoin in particular, because the other the other ones a lot of them weren't around. Um, Bitcoin 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. Every January it crashed down. Um, because of the Chinese New Year, but then by April it was back up to to where it started. So this is just seems to be a quiet period while the while the Asians are celebrating New Year and having their big festivities. But it's also an opportunity to pick some of the good ones. And obviously Quentin's done that, which is why his portfolio is still up ten percent. A lot of people are looking at you know twenty, thirty, thirty percent losses at the moment. So is is there any coins in particular that you've been looking at this week, Will? Um, I've, um, I've, I'm looking at um, doing some more research on Dent, D-E-N-T. Okay, and, I'm going to write that one, one down. I haven't heard of that. And um, yeah, that I didn't. That was what I was, the second one I was going to look at today. So, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, so I've got some research, but I'm, I'm a bit behind in my day, so I haven't got to present. But yeah, I'll definitely have that next week. Yeah. So, yeah, so for the kids. I, sorry, buddy. For for the kids listening at home, tell us a little bit more about Dent. Oh, okay. are, they, are they like a panel beating company or? Hang on, mate. I just I've got a little more thing here. I thought if you yeah. ask me stuff about Power Ledger, I might be able to be active and more intelligent. Oh, okay. We'll ask you about that one. We'll ask you about that one first while you're looking for the Dent. Um. So, um, Power Ledger uh, is uh, looking at distributing uh, uh, energy. Mm -hmm. um, on a distributed thing uh, basis, um, I don't really understand it, but they've got um, they've got contracts in that with uh, in New Zealand and Western Australia and, and uh, quite a few others. Um, oh, what else? I'll tell you oh, right here. So, um, uh, Power Ledge is building a trustless, transparent, interoperable energy trading platform. Will connect both the current power system and the rapidly growing alternative energy resources like solar and wind power. And they currently have successful pilot projects, one in Bustleton, Western Australia, which enable a community to buy, sell and trade energy on the Power Ledger platform. A review of the project showed the average home in the community saved 600,000, up uh, 600 Australian dollars per year. And uh, also done some stuff on that with um, the Western Australian government. Um, so that's what they sort of do. They um, and they got a they got a grant from another for another project in um, in Australia, and uh, got projects in New Zealand. Yes, yeah, so they're doing quite well, mate. So um, yeah. I, I know I know people who bought in you know uh, well before Christmas, but um, I'm I'm looking to get in at one Australian dollar. It's currently in one twenty seven. Okay. So I'm just going to wait for this choppy little market to um, and go on there and snaffle a deal, so to speak. <laughs> Mate, there's, there's also the chance it could go back to $1.90, which is where it was, um, I don't know, a week or two ago. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be hesitant to wait just in case well, it doesn't right, go below a dollar. Time, I might have got enough other opportunities. I, I wait till it comes to me. So I'm not, <laughs> not missing out enough and might have got, more than I can deal with. So I just, just I wanted to bring something to the table for today. So that's something yeah. that um, well, but, um, so yeah, they, they have competition. There's a new ICO coming out called We Power, W E yep. Power, that's coming out so, um, uh, in the next week or so. I think it'll be whitelisted by now. Okay. Um, these, they're not, but they're, these guys are a bit more ahead of the pack. Pal, yeah. I think. Because I had a look I, at the trade. Sorry. Yeah, can't continue. 
I had a look at the trading pattern in that for Power Ledger, so it did the typical normal crypto thing. It's gone through the, the roof to a dollar ninety, yep. and uh, and um, you know it's fallen down again. And so yeah, I'm thinking it'll go back up. But yeah, I think we've got a couple of weeks to settle down. Well, I don't know if that's settled down. It'll be quite choppy. So I think so. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't think that you were on the second call that we had, Will, where I went through the the four step coin protocol, um, which is a system that I, I'm using. I've basically adapted it from my financial planning days um, to look at what's a good investment, and it's just the acronym C O I N. So the C is is looking at who's the CEO, who's the CFO, you know, he, who's the people in charge of this operation, whether they're reputable. You know, you can check their uh, their credentials on LinkedIn and find out what other projects they've been involved in, check them out on social media, find out whether they're a good bloke or not. Yeah. And then, oh, we actually look at the operation, like what, what does this place do? Um, so obviously for Power Ledger, they're, they're giving energy back to the grid, but they're giving it to the actual people rather than selling it to the power company, um, which is an opportunity. Like it, it takes a, a millisecond to send a bit of electricity to someone in New Zealand or, or Perth or whatever. Um, so we're at the CEOs, we've got the operations, uh, then we're looking at the early investors, I is for investors, and not only is Richard Branson invested into Power Ledger, but also Origin Energy has invested heavily in there because they realise that if people cut the power company out, they're not going to be making any money. So they've jumped in. And then N is for network. So we look at, on the social networks, you know, who's talking about Power Ledger on Facebook, on Twitter, are they updating their Telegram site and that sort of stuff? Um, and you give them, give them a score out of those four things. Obviously, that's going to be a good long-term hold. So, very good. They came um, um, third or so, there, there was a competition recently. Um, yep. they, uh, I don't know if they made the final cut, but they're on the top three to go to Richard Branson's um, Nectar Island for a conference, whatever that would be. I don't know. Conferences here from Nick Island. I think it's more about drinking and have a good time, isn't it? <laughs> that sounds about right. But if, if he's one of your investors and he invites you over to his island, then you pretty well got to go, don't you? So, so I think they obviously attracted some good people. So, yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. And obviously, Branson does his due diligence because it, it took him a long time to make his billions and he doesn't want to lose it in a hurry. So, uh, J, JT, are you there, man? We saw you yep. strolling through the park earlier, and I, th I think I even saw Fiona over your shoulder. Yeah, they're out there. We're out walking the dog. Ah, oh, fantastic! Uh, did you did you have something you wanted to share this week, mate? No, I thought I'd just tune in and listen to what others have got to say this week. Oh, you didn't do your homework. <laughs> uh, yes and no. Yeah. I was just watching things fluctuate this week and kind of went thinking whether I, you know, jump in and things like that. So, yeah, kind of watching with bated breath. It's certainly a buying opportunity. My uh, hope, yeah. Yeah, you you remember you remember September 11 plane crash and the bank stocks went down and the airline stocks went down. Yep. And, um, and it took a matter of a, a few weeks to a couple of months before they all bounced back again. Back, yeah. yeah, it's it's business as usual. But I, I was saying to the other guys that um, you know, this this is a pattern that we've seen in, at least in Bitcoin for the last four or five years in a row. Every January it goes down, but usually by by March or April it's actually up ahead of where it was. So it's just one of those things. It's it's usually twenty two to thirty days before Chinese New Year is when it takes a pounding. Because um, a lot of yeah, them remember you saying that last week. Are pulling their money out. So there's, there's certainly some buying opportunities. Uh, Will's going to wait for it to drop a little bit further before he jumps in. But I'm, I'm sort of thinking I've got, I've got to jump in now because even if it does go down by 5 or 10% this week, it's, it's probably going to shoot up by 50% when, it, when all the money piles back in again. So very good. Will, have you, have you got any info on, on Dent for us or will I move on to, to the ones um, I've been looking at? Go to somebody else and I'll find it, mate, and come back to yep. you. Okay. So there was one that um, Lindsay's not on the call tonight. Um, There's probably two or three weeks ago that Lindsay actually mentioned Enigma. 
Um, and I did look into one of her other recommendations, which was uh, SIA. And SIA shot up by 24% when everybody else was going down. So that was a good pick. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, and Enigma, I only got some time to do some research in the last couple of days. And basically what they're looking at is, you know, everybody's talking about privacy and, you know, Facebook knows so much about you that you've probably forgotten more things about yourself than what Facebook knows and what Google knows. And we're all trying to respect our privacy and not give our, our data to these huge corporations because we don't know what they're going to do with it. And, they, you know, they can have identity theft or they can sell, send you a whole bunch of ads and you end up buying stuff you didn't want or need. Um, but they're saying they need the information, obviously, for their marketing practices. And there's other big organisations who want access to it, like, for example, health funds and things like that. So what Enigma has actually proposed is to put a black box in between the corporations and the people and said, okay, we're going to allow you to, to put all your data in here and your, your name and your date of birth and your height and your weight and all that sort of stuff, what you, what you ate for breakfast last Tuesday. And Enigma puts this black box around it. So the other companies like the health funds or Google or Facebook or whatever, they can actually have a look at the data, but there's no identifying data. So it's not actually associated with you. They'll just say, you know, here's a, here's a 42 year old bloke who smokes and drinks and eats Fruit Loops for breakfast every day. Um, and they can actually look, you know, whether he's likely to have a heart attack or something like that without identifying the person. So it's, it's a pretty interesting technology. It's pretty exciting. Uh, I think it'll solve a lot of problems for, for a lot of people and the big corporations will be wanting to, to buy this data because people are, are much more willing to give their information if they know it's going to be anonymized and you know, neither the Enigma people or the people who are actually buying the data, they, they can analyze it without actually looking at it, which is quite exciting. Um, another one that I've been looking at this week is called SALT. S-A-L-T. Oh, the, the code for Enigma, by the way, e is E-N-G. Um, SALT, S-A-L-T, which um, I've also put on the Krillionaire website for those of you who have actually made a truckload of money out of crypto in the last 12 months, but you still think you're going to make more. So what SALT's actually doing is giving loans, uh, financing people in, in real cash, in fiat currency, against their crypto portfolio. So say, for example, you put a thousand bucks into Bitcoin a year or two ago, you're now sitting on about $20,000, but you don't want to cash it out to buy the new car because you think that Bitcoin's still going to go up higher. So you actually transfer your Bitcoin to these guys. They just hold it as collateral and still goes up and down and does its thing. And they can advance you $10,000 in cash. You can spend the cash and do whatever you like. They're going to charge you interest, obviously, but it's, it's not as much interest because they've got a very liquid asset that they can liquidate in two seconds. Unlike when you're going to buy, you know, when, you, when you're borrowing money for a car, or when you're borrowing money for a house, it's very difficult for the bank to get their collateral back because they've got to put the item up for sale and wait for somebody to come and buy it. Whereas this one, it's almost like a cash, a cash asset. So that's very interesting. People are starting to do that. Um, I'm not sure what the loan limits are and things like that, if you guys want to check it out, but um, you do have to buy the coin in order to actually get a loan from SALT, like to, to apply for a loan costs you a couple of SALT coins. So that's going to see the price being propped up because the only people who can actually um, get a loan are the ones who own the SALT coin. So you, you're going to see people constantly buying the SALT coin, which is what you want to see when you're looking at your crypto. Um, what else have I been looking at? Jeremy, yes, mate. Um, apparently, Salt got a backlog. Another friend of mine's in Bisson, in it, and he said they got a backlog. So, it's very yep. healthy. So, okay. Price should go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's, if there's only one or two companies who are offering, offering loans against cryptocurrency, and there's a lot of people sitting on a lot of gains over the last 12 months, I imagine you might be waiting a few weeks before they open your email. But, um, that, can be a, that can be a good thing. As you say, it's, it's going to prop the price up. But it's also an opportunity for someone else to come into the, into the market and offer something similar. Hello. Hello. And there's, there's room for Coca-Cola and Pepsi. There's room for McDonald's and, and Hungry Jack's or Burger King if you're in the US. So, oh, getting a bit of, bit of rain here. Let me know if that's way too loud on the tin roof. 
That's okay. Uh, yeah. There's last week I talked about Monero, uh, which is a totally anonymous coin and people can use it for buying drugs or guns or just for protecting their own privacy on the internet. Um, there's another one I looked at this week called Zcash or Zcash. Um, code for that one is ZEC. Um, and it's using a completely different coded protocol, which is called the ZK SNARK, for those of you who are writing all of this stuff down. And ZK stands for zero knowledge. So even it doesn't know what's going on inside of its own system. Uh, you'd know if you would transferred Bitcoin to somebody else that, um, wow, that's really loud. If you've transferred Bitcoin to somebody else, you've got their wallet address and they'll have your wallet address. And if you care to search the blockchain, then you can actually see every amount of money they've received and every amount of money they've sent. But um, Zcash is, is basically anonymizing that whole system. And even the system can't actually trace where the money's gone. Every time they update the block on the blockchain, it deletes the previous bit. So it's got zero knowledge of what happened beforehand. So you can't track through the history. It's just each, each new block is the only block there is. Now this uh, Chinese New Year is Year of the Dog, which is Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you have some of those, Quentin? Um, I did. My son, my son bought it a while ago, so I thought I'd better buy some just to be in with him. But yeah. he made a lot of money about, oh, when I got money for the I think that long ago it went right up. Oh, well, when it say it went right up, it went a little bit of a cent, a little bit more of a cent. Yeah, yeah. You know that one started as a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. So it went up to actually uh, 0 0.019 from like 0 0.0013. Yeah, yeah. So he only had like, he had thousands of them because he only invested a few hundred dollars. But he made 18,000 of them. What was that, sorry? He made 18000 off just a few hundred dollars. That was crazy. Wow. That's but amazing. that's a 54 Chinese New Year. So it's yeah, yeah. maybe, even though it's a joke, the Chinese will buy it just for good luck. Because <laughs> it's a dog, and it's here with a dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a bit of trouble hearing you, Quentin, just because of the rain. Can you still hear me clearly? Oh, yeah, you're clear. Can hardly hear the rain. Okay. Ah, it's, it's, really, it's really coming down here. Um, okay, there's another one that I've been looking at, um, which is called Byte Ball, B-Y-T-E Ball. And code for that one is G-B-Y-T-E. Um, that's one of these ones, um, where I, I talked a couple of weeks ago about the DAG coin, which is an acronym for Directed Acyclic something graph i don't know it's some computer technology but um it's basically it's, it's not using the blockchain it's using this tangle it's using multiple nodes on on multiple devices and instead of having miners out there mining the bitcoin and using their, their huge big hardware things it's actually using the people in the network are the ones pushing the transactions through so consequently the um the chance of it going down is significantly less and also the fees are significantly less. I was, I was reading, a, reading a book today and um, this guy was saying, yeah, there's so many miners now in this one region of China where they have subsidized electricity and so many miners in, in Iceland at the moment where they have very cheap electricity and cold temperatures that if someone wanted to take down Bitcoin, all they have got to do is like just blow up this one town in China and, and blow up the capital of Iceland and the Bitcoin network will be gone because 90% of their miners are, are in those areas. Whereas these, um, these tangles or the DAGs or the, um, what else are they calling them? The, the hash graph is on everybody's system. It's on everybody's phone. It's on everybody's computer. So they pretty well can't be taken down. And the more people get on it, the faster it goes, which the problem we're facing at the moment with Bitcoin is the more people get on the, on the Bitcoin, the slower the system goes because there's so many people using it. Um, so, I've, I've spoke before about IOTA, uh, which is also a similar sort of offering on, on the new network. And how you have to actually process two other people's transactions before your transaction goes through. 
as a consequence with IOTA, you're not paying any fees because you're actually doing not the mining yourself. Seen, eh? But with, with DAG coin, you actually pay, I think it's five cents or 0.5 cents uh, for transactions. And you might be transferring a thousand dollars up to a million dollars US and it's still the same fee. So you know, for, for a, a transfer of a million dollars US, you're paying less than five cents, which is pretty good. And um, I think it's significantly cheaper than what Bitcoin has been charging me in the last in the last few weeks. Uh, we we can hear you, JT. You got something? Oh, I'm I'm going to mute you. You can unmute yourself in a minute. Mike um, Ford has a nice graph. Hey, what's that? Sorry. Byteball has a nice graph. Mate, to be honest, I, I haven't seen the chart. I've, I've been looking it's at the fundamentals. Continuing up. That's good. Very good. I was having a look at it today. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you, you're you're in front of me on this one, Quentin. Um. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm making a big spreadsheet of everything. So all mm -hmm. the data and everything I can find. I'm, and then I'm going to compare it all. Yep. Yep. Very good. I'm, I'm hoping you're going to share the information with us, mate. You know, we're your closest. You want me to give you the spreadsheet? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, you, you, you share it with us and I'll, I'll put it on the Krillionaire website, mate. <laughs> so um, there's, there's a, a few updates there. As, as I say, I've updated a whole bunch of, um, of coins on there. There's some existing coins. There's some new coins coming up as far as ICOs. Uh, plus there's another book on there. So we've now got three books on there. The, the book that I was reading today, which is called Beyond Bitcoin and looking at the future of cryptocurrency and, and how they're going to work things and how they're going to anonymize the data and just the, the implications for the world at large. They're talking about, you know, how taxes will become unsustainable because if everyone's trading in crypto with each other, um, the governments won't be able to collect income tax or capital gains tax. So we'll go back to the world as it was before 1913 uh, when you'd pay land taxes on buying and selling houses and um, you know, you, you pay your normal, normal rates and things like that, but also they had, um, they had import duties and sales tax. So when you bought a bottle of rum, for example, you know, you pay, you pay a certain amount of tax on that. Um, that's what we had, you know, up, up, up until world war one, we didn't have income tax. We didn't have capital gains tax. And that's what this guy's talking about. Everybody's trading with each other. And even if you're even if you're trading with people overseas, you could potentially buy ten thousand cases of, of rum and that sort of stuff just by sending an email to someone, and maybe you can actually not pay the the import duties. And what's the implication of that? And how's the government going to feed the hungry and help the homeless? Well, the charities are going to have to step up into that space, you know. And people may feel better about supporting the charities because a lot of the times we trust the charities more than we trust the government. So very interesting book. If you want to jump onto the Krillionaire website and grab that book for free as well. Um, what else? What else? Auger, um, A-U-G-U-R. Code for that one is R-E-P for those playing at home. And it's interesting if you're a gambler, if you like sporting events, if you like Oscars, if you like betting on the outcome of a two horse race, um, it's one where you can actually jump on. You can bet on a whole bunch of stuff. And there's a lot of, a lot of Australians and Americans who are very much into their gambling. A lot of the Asian community very, very much into their gambling as well. Uh, if there's something that you wanted to bet on that's not actually on there, you could jump on there and put it on there. So let's say, for example, you, know, you don't particularly like Donald Trump and you think that someone over there doesn't like him as well and someone's going to shoot him, then you can actually put that on there as you know, I bet that Donald Trump is going to get shot. And you could put a dollar on that bet. Maybe the odds on that are a thousand to one. Um, so other people are going to bet against you and you might make a thousand dollars if it actually happens. But even if you don't bet on that, you can actually act as, as the bookmaker in between. So, you know, Dolly Parton's going to win best Oscar or best actress or something like that. Whatever it happens to be, it doesn't have to be killing Donald Trump. Sorry, Donald, didn't mean that. Um, but whatever outcome you want to put on there, if, if that outcome occurs and people place bets on it, you will actually make some money on the way through. So that's an interesting one if you're into gambling or if you know someone who's into gambling or if you don't want to gamble, but you just want to profit from other people who are gambling. 
depending on your ethical standpoint at the time. Um, and of course, our, our other our other doggy coin for the year of the dog, you know, the the D O G E. That one was was started as a joke, just for for a cute and fluffy thing, like the like the Jesus coin and and some of these other ones. Um, but the Boston coin, which you'll see some details also on the Krillion Air site, and the logo for that is just a little Boston Boston Terrier puppy. Uh, it's actually like a, like an exchange traded fund or like a managed fund. You actually buy the one coin. And there's, there's an asset behind that. So you've got the 200 top cryptocurrencies and the 200 top technology stocks. So most of the coins out there are backed by nothing. Um, BitX coin, which we've, we've talked about on a previous call and is also on the, on the Krillionaire website, um, that's actually backed by real estate. So let's say you've got a thousand bucks in there or $10,000 or whatever and it crashes, it dies, well, you know that you're going to get 40 to 50% of your money back because it's actually asset backed by real estate. So the, the Boston coin is 90% backed by these other, by these other coins and um, stocks and shares. So as I say, it's similar to a managed fund or an exchange traded fund where if you are buying, say, street tracks or something like that on the stock exchange, you're buying one, one stock, but you've actually got the top 200 200 companies in there. So it's an asset backed and you know, Bitcoin is backed by nothing. It's done very well for itself over the last eight years, but at the end of the day, it's backed by nothing. And there's a lot of coins out there that are scarce. Bless you, Quentin. Um, a lot of coins out there that are scarce, like there's only 20 million of Bitcoins in existence, but at the end of the day, they don't have any assets behind them. So there's not too many um, that are actually backed by by actual tangible assets. So, uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, Gustav, I think last week mentioned Park Gene for those who weren't on the call. Um, that's peer to peer parking. Uh, it's sort of like, um, you know, Uber is when you're looking for a taxi and you can't find a taxi. And Park Gene, G E N E, is when you're looking for a park and you can't find a park. And that's probably more appropriate if you're in a big city because somebody's paid, you know, $20 to pay in that parking space. They only end up staying 10 minutes because the person they wanted to visit isn't there or the shop's closed and they're going to leave. They've already paid for the park and you might pay them $4 for that park that they were about to give up for nothing. Or obviously people who work in a, in a big building and they have a certain number of car parks downstairs. If they took the bus to work that day or if they took their scooter to work that day, they're not using their car park. And rather than you going and paying, you know, $50 or $80 to park in the CBD, you can actually stay in their park. More like an Airbnb than an Uber, isn't it? Yeah, the Airbnb of parking. <laughs> That's one that, one that Lindsay discovered. Um, so JT's gone quiet, probably because I muted him because he was having another conversation with somebody else on there. But I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can actually um, at, least, at least commit to looking at three coins this week, finding three coins and coming back and sharing with the group. So I've shared six or seven now. And um, as I say, there's, there's ones being updated pretty well. Every, every second day I jump on the Krillionaire website and, and throw a couple on there from what I'm learning. And I'm hoping that you guys are going to chip into our knowledge as well. So, hey, Will, um, what have you got? Jeremy? Jeremy? Yeah, man? I, I put a little thing there. Robin Hood is coming to town. Going, going to town. Do you know what robinhood.com is? Uh, no, I don't, mate. That's it. Well, if, if you research it, mate, I think you'll find it very advantageous to put on the site. It's a new exchange. Yep. And it's um, going to give Coinbase a run for its money because it's not going to charge NAFL fees, not the 4% or the b add to the billion dollars at Coinbase. Yeah. So it's quite a bit of chatter. It's called robinhood.com. Okay. okay. Very cool. And is that, that's um, a website, obviously. Is, does that work yep. on your phone, do you know? Uh, yes, they're going to have an app. Yeah. So you just sign up because um, um, obviously, unless you've got VPNs into the States, I'll pick up you're in Australia and they'll yeah. let you know when it's coming to town. But um, uh, Coinbase is uh, shitting themselves now that these guys are coming to, come to the party. 
They got quite yeah. good backing. Yeah. Um, they guarantee um, half a million dollars worth if your account gets raided. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So they um, got all the security um, security exchange, whatever that thing is in the states, in place. But yeah, quite a few other guys are quite excited about them. Yeah, I, I heard I heard someone this week complaining about Coinbase, um, and th this guy is a big trader. Like he, he's moving a hundred thousand from this and a hundred thousand into that and a hundred thousand into something else, and he's like, by the time I actually put the money in, like transfer actual currency into like Bitcoin and then transfer the Bitcoin into something else and then transfer it back into Bitcoin. He said he's losing 10%. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the I fees are that fees. high, but that's, that's, that's what he said. Wow. So um, that, 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 that wouldn't be um, right, mate. But they do, Coinbase is very, very hard, um, like not well known for that. That's how they yeah. made a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, I mean, I, I remember from, from my trading days in, in the bank, you know, like you, you pay $25 for a small trade if you're putting in 500 or $1,000. But once you started trading like $10,000 or $100,000, the fees went dramatically down. Uh, so they're actually looking after their, their bigger clients. But it doesn't seem like that happens on, on these other exchanges. Is your client a, a US-based citizen? Uh, no, he's, he's an Australian. Hmm. So, a couple of guys, and I reckon Gemini's a lot better if you can do that sort of money. Yeah. Okay. A couple of my people I met today are doing that. They're just trading between exchanges. Yeah. Making a lot of money because they're all, I don't know why they don't get the same numbers, but mm. Bitcoin on one might be a dollar, but on another one might be a dollar ten. So they're shifting across, making the dollar ten and pulling out the profit. Yeah, yeah. So, sometimes I've found Quentin that's a, a difference of, of time zones. Um, so you might you might place your trades and then you go to bed, but you know while you're sleeping, while Australia is sleeping, Korea is waking up, or while Korea is sleeping, then Japan or Africa is is actually trading. Um, and so sometimes they they're still using the price from five hours ago or eight hours ago because it just hasn't been updated yet. Yeah. If, if you get lucky so enough to do that's that. That's what USI was doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got a message today from someone who I, I think I haven't heard from in about five years, and he's like, "Oh, I've just met these guys, and they've got this, you know, these are the high up network marketing people, and they're going to be trading this new coin." And I'm just like, "Okay, BitConnect has shut down. <laughs> Usitech's been kicked out of um, Canada and America, and now you're coming out with the third one." So. Yeah. Well, I think, I think USI is going back into USI in Canada. I think they've done a deal because it flipped them too much. Right. Right, right. It was just a compliance thing. They just didn't want to comply. Mm, mm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's interesting when you're actually selling an investment thing, but you're not calling it an investment. You, you're calling yeah. it a package. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, something for the lawyers to argue about, mate. I think that one is, is the, the terms of the the terms of the white paper and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so Gem Gemini is another exchange. Um, yeah, that's the uh, exchange that's owned by the two guys that um, got a payout from Facebook, and then will become billionaires on Bitcoin. Oh, the Winklevosses. The Winklevosses. Yeah. They own Gemini, and yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I know a guy who, uh, who's advised me. Um, you can move eight hundred k into Gemini quite easily. So if you've right. got those big players, mate, that are unaware of that, just yeah. got to get, just got to, um, you don't want to be moving any more of that at any one day at any one time because it just freaks the exchanges out. <laughs> yeah. All the exchanges are getting bigger all the time. There's a lot more people getting in there. So yeah, it's, it's a very, very small market at the moment. Um, I was, I was talking to a bloke the other day who's actually done the numbers and he said, if, if you look at like the existing markets, like you've got the stock market, got the bond market and foreign currency exchange and that sort of stuff. And we're talking about hundreds of trillions of dollars. Um, and he said, imagine like Bitcoin is one grain of sand on the beach. So, you know, even if, even if Bitcoin exploded tomorrow, it would be very sad, obviously, because there'd be a trillion dollars wiped out of the out of the system. And a lot of people would be upset, but it's not going to have this big flow on effect to the other to the other exchanges as such. 
So, but gradually it's, it's growing and it's, it's starting to affect them because money is actually leaving the stock market to go into the cryptocurrency market. The, the irony of that, Jeremy, is it's only just outpacing cyber crime, which is 500 billion. <laughs> So it's not only just a lot of news media stuff. There's a, you know, like you say, there's trillions on the foreign exchange. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the exchanges itself is bigger than the whole market anyway. I don't know what's London or NASDAQ or Chicago or whatever. We'll talk yeah. Anyway, so it's just relative that that's what the, the media's taken up on more, more than anybody because there's trillions of dollars sloshed around every day in the foreign exchange markets. Yeah, Bitfinex uh, is a big market compared to all the others. What, what's that, Quentin? I said I found when I did FX, it was a huge market compared to say the stock market. And oh yeah, was everything was instant. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the, the bond market is more than twice the size of the stock market, but no yeah. one talks about that on the news. No. Um, and then the, the FX market is is bigger than both of those put together. It's so really yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so for you, for you guys, thank you for being on the call tonight. I think we're gonna we're gonna end early tonight because there's there's not much other stuff to go through. We've profiled a few coins. We've shared a couple of exchanges, um, and there's some some opportunities out there. So jump onto the um, the Quillionaire website. Where you go, mate? Yep. Whereabouts on the website is that the four steps? I'm looking through the resources page. Is it somewhere yeah. else, those four steps, mate? I can't find it. Um, I think I only mentioned it on one of the calls. So thank you oh. for pointing that out. I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to type it up. Um, I, I mentioned it on, on one of the calls, maybe, maybe the second or third call, which all the videos of the previous calls are on there. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a good point. That's okay. I, I, I misunderstood what you said, mate. I'll listen yeah, no, to the call. I'm happy to do that homework. That's all good. Yeah. Alrighty, so jump in this week and you know, f find a couple of coins that you're, you're interested in, even if, even if you don't end up buying them. And even if you read halfway through the white paper and decide it's not for you, it might be beneficial for someone else. Uh, I mean, we, we talked last week, I think, about the, um, the legal cannabis and marijuana industry and that sort of stuff. Not everybody's interested in that. If you're a hippie or if you're health conscious, maybe you are. Um, but maybe that knowledge you know, like is, is beneficial for somebody else. And if you're not into to gambling or decentralized, whatever the hell it is, car parks, uh, maybe you can share that information with somebody else because you give it, you give it out, it'll come back to you. Absolutely. So um, yeah, pick up a couple of coins this week, stay posted on the website. I will update some more information on there and jump on and read that book. The, the, the Beyond Bitcoin book is only about 90 pages. Uh, probably took me an hour and a half, two hours to read that this morning. And um, obviously there's, there's my book on there and Jamie's book on there. And um, just a heads up that Jamie's actually running an event on February 9 and 10 on the Gold Coast. Um, Nick Halleck, one of the most successful, successful stock market traders is going to be there. He's very interested in crypto. Um, and Jamie's obviously speaking. There's a couple of other people speaking there who I, who I don't know, who I haven't met. Um, but I'm, I'm putting that one down in my calendar. It's, it's Friday and Saturday on the Gold Coast. Um, so definitely well worth a, well worth a look in. If, if you can't make it, then obviously watch a couple of the videos, read a couple of the books and um, keep sharing the information, keep learning. Do you know Nick? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've known Nick for a few years. Did he ever yeah, go into space? He did. He did, yeah. yeah I didn't mean when... I knew him over in Thailand. He used to work with a friend of mine, David Cavanaugh, and he was over in Russia or something trying to get up into space and everything. Yeah, yeah, because in, in America, like to be part of NASA, you have to satisfy certain criteria for yeah, yeah. You know, height and weight and fitness yeah. and breathing underwater and walking on water and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And the Russians don't really care as long as you throw millions of dollars at them. Anybody can go into yeah, space. Yeah. So, he really yeah, that, he did. He did. Oh, he was, wow. The, the, the first non-Russian cosmonaut. So... I have to go down the Gold Coast and say hello because I know him fairly well. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you've got that kind of money to throw around, and life, life becomes very fun. So... Yeah, he's a, he was a big internet marketer for a long time, eh? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a crazy guy. I mean, flying yeah. into outer space. He actually bought one of the, um, the rovers, the moon rovers. Oh, right. Um, 
that the US government set up to drive around on the moon. You know, he's just like, oh, okay, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> You know, so like some people keep an old classic car in the backyard, you know, like yeah, an old yeah. HQ Holden, but he's got a bloody got a space vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. yeah, he's a very unique individual, isn't it? Yes. So, Thanks very much. Good. Thank you, guys. I'll chat to you next week. Um, if you need to get in touch in the meantime, then you can just click on the contact us on the Crillionaire page and that'll, that'll send me an email if you don't have my emails and numbers. Fantastic. Thank Talk you. to you soon. Cheers.